what is the Internet Blockchain Communication Protocol? Why might we want such a thing? Next slide. The reason is that the polycentric interchain, um, I postulate, is already here. What do I mean by that? I mean uh, a sort of fractal unfolding of functionality of different blockchains taking their development in different directions, specializing in different areas, focusing on different use cases. But at the moment, because consensus protocols require consensus, these blockchains can't talk to each other. If you have assets on Ethereum, a BTC on Bitcoin, if you have contracts on um, a different smart contract blockchain, say, all of those are siloed. They can't interoperate. We could give everyone a uh, much more ability to interoperate, to use the unique features of each specialized state machine while bridging across to other specialized state machines to use different features by letting those state machines communicate. That's what IBC is for. Yep, so IBC is a messaging protocol. What do you need in order to communicate? You need the ability to send messages. You need those messages to be authenticated. You need those messages to be ordered. You need to be able to reason about where those messages are going around the topology, which might be changing at any moment. Uh, and this is what we want IBC to be able to do. There's not a, a defined end goal per se. Rather, we want IBC to enable uh, continued innovation. We think that maybe there won't be a finite number of blockchains over time. Maybe there will be an infinite number of blockchains. It's not going to be convergence towards a one, uh, you know, one framework or one state machine. Rather, it's going to be a continued unfolding, continued innovation, continued specialization. And this specialization, while remaining interoper uh, retaining interoperability, is what will really enable blockchains to compete, decentralized services to compete with you know, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, all of the centralized points of coordination. So how might you utilize IBC? IBC has sort of a core protocol layer and an application protocol layer. The core protocol layer, we've pretty much finished both in specification and implementation, and that is available for you to play with now, including the relayer during the hackathon. But a lot of innovation and uh, uh, further development and really the most exciting area right now is in development of application layer protocols. Application layer protocols sit on top of IBC. So for example, next slide, you could have an application layer protocol that uh, facilitated token transfer, facilitated transferring fungible or non-fungible tokens across chains. Next slide. Or you could have a protocol which facilitated cross-chain account abstraction, uh, basically allowing you to have your keys, your account on one chain, but delegate control uh, to another chain. So you could use keys on one chain to send transactions on a second chain or even a third chain uh, uh, and choose separately you know, what state, uh, uh, state machine interactions you were affecting and where you were keeping the keys which control those interactions. Next slide. Another uh, option uh, that in fact looks a lot like sharding is interchain code relocation where you're transporting code in packets across in messages across chains that then can be run if those chains have compatible virtual machines. Next slide. So I want to talk a little bit briefly about the core protocol that makes this, these application layers possible. We call this the Tau of IBC, transport, authentication, and ordering. What are those three components and why are they essential? Transport simply means getting data from one place to another. Of course, you need that as a prerequisite uh, for any sort of communications protocol. Authentication means ensuring the data came from where you think it came from. Uh, we're talking about blockchains here. Blockchains run consensus protocols. This is what makes them useful. People can agree on uh, data at any point in time. Uh, but of course, if we want blockchains to be able to communicate with each other, we need other blockchains to be able to verify that the blockchains from which they're receiving the messages actually sent them, hence authentication. Finally, ordering. Ordering allows applications which are written on, uh, with parts on multiple chains to reason about their interactions with parts on other chains because they can reason about the order in which messages are sent and received. Next slide. So how do you interact with the core protocol, the Tau of IBC? This is uh, what we call the protocol stack. Like uh, TCP IP, uh, IBC is a layered protocol. Uh, we've tried to get the abstraction boundaries between the layers pretty clear. They're probably not perfect yet, but they're getting there. So first off, clients. Next slide. Clients are responsible for verifying consensus transcripts. So by consensus transcripts, uh, we mean the output uh, uh, or part of the, part of the output of a consensus algorithm, which then allows uh, a one chain to verify that the state machine of another chain actually committed some data. Next slide. Now, once you have two chains, you need some way to associate them. And uh, in the mechanism for association in IBC, we call a connection. A connection is created with a handshake. So basically some, mess some control messages sent between two chains to set up uh, a paired set of identifiers. 
and then that connection can be used to create many channels. Next slide. Channels are a data pipe between two modules. So modules uh, is a, a general abstraction that we use to encapsulate independent units of code. They might be smart contracts, they might be modules in the Cosmos SDK, modules on substrate, uh, you know, contracts on the EVM, con uh, JavaScript contra contracts on Oric swing set. Uh, channels are simply used to facilitate the transfer of data of messages from one module to another module where the modules might live on the same chain, but in the most interesting case, of course, might live on different chains. Next slide. Packets uh, in IBC are the actual messages where all the action is at. So different packets, uh, just like different TCP packets, can contain HTTP data or contain um, SMTP data or contain different, different kinds of application data. Different IBC packets can contain different kinds of application data, token transfers, cross-chain account, abstraction, voting, cross-chain, et cetera. So next slide, if we visualize this all in a diagram, what does it look like? What does the path of a packet from one module on one chain to another module on another chain, uh, how, do you, how do we visualize that? So if we start out at module A on the left, number one, module A decides that it wants to send some packet. It constructs that packet, it addresses it, identifying itself as the sender and identifying module B on some other chain B as the receiver. It then sends that to the IBC module on chain A. Chain A processes that packet, it commits it, uh, with its consensus algorithm, then a relayer, which is an off-chain process, is responsible for physical data transport. The relayer picks up the packet, relays it to chain B. Uh, chain B accepts that packet, inspects its addressing data, uh, figures out where it needs to go, and then sends it to module B number nine on the right. So uh, another in another visualization, um, where basically this time, time is going uh, down instead of left to right, I think, um, uh, chain <laughs> foo uh, is committing to block hash 92, then the relayer uh, relays that block hash to chain bar, um, and uh, chain foo then sends a message, and the relayer now that it has the block hash for 92 can verify that message. Or sorry, the relayer can send the message to chain bar, which can verify the message. So I hope that all made sense. I realize it was a deluge of information very quickly. Feel free to ask questions uh, perhaps afterwards or in the chat or find me online.